Sean Sport in podcast form. Well, the West Coast Eagles were absolutely outstanding yesterday. And uh, if you are a believer that their your team would go particularly well for the rest of the season, good luck to you. There was some good signs there, Natalie. Like the uh, yeah. some energy. I think we're, we're still, as an Eagles supporter, we're still cautiously optimistic. I don't think we think this is that we're a premiership chance after yesterday. Yeah. Do you no, know you're what not. I mean? You're not. But um, it, it, you just rather the, you, to take the W than not. Do you know what I mean? Eight like goals in the second quarter. Yeah, it was a ripping second quarter after last week when their first half was so woeful. It was good to see, you know. Um, so someone there in the coaching team has said, be better sooner. Yes. Be better. And How about we be better? Now, what about today? What about, about today, work. guys? And they've said, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so that was good. So, uh, yeah, the fans are up and about. And as I yeah. said, eight goals in that second quarter. So that's something to yeah. look forward to. Be better sooner. Here, mm. we just, um, like, we're just like, you know. We, we don't subscribe we, to that theory. We, said we, it. Don't, we don't. Just warm up to your adequate yeah. is our motto. <laughs> and then coast home. <laughs> Mediocre is okay, isn't it? That's a lot of our conversations. So Fremantle's game on um, Saturday evening finished in controversy because the ball was kicked out deliberately. But everybody was questioning the rule because I think a lot of us didn't know. So did it cross the line before the siren sounded is the the question. Well, none of us knew that that rule existed. Mm. We all thought it was deliberate, therefore the umpire has to pay it. But because the ball was believed by the umpires to be in play at the time... That yes. Then well, that makes sense logically. That part though. makes sense. Yes. That part makes sense. But, but the question is, did the siren sound when they're saying it sounded? Hundred yeah. percent. So yeah. Justin Longmuir was after after the game. Uh, what he thought of the situation itself, and um, you know, he didn't want to be controversial. I trust the umpire got it right. Yeah, my gut feel is we would have stolen it if we had got a shot on goal and we had, we had it drawn or won it. Like, yeah, I admire the boys' fight at the end and never never give up attitude. But yeah, we've got a bit of work to do on the last incident. Trust the umpire got it right. I okay, did the umpire get it right though? Well, they, it, I, I don't know because the AFL have said out 100. percent Yeah, we've ticked the box. We got it right. And I saw the umpire with uh, the audio that they collected. And it, he was making a decision and saying the right stuff. What they're not showing us is exactly when the siren went and where the actual ball was in a freeze frame. Well, yes. that would be important, that part, but yeah? The, that's, and that's, they have the that's technology the to show that, yeah? Well, of course they do, So yeah. the umpires, though, get the siren. They have an earpiece. Yes. So it's possible that you, they would hear it before you see it on the telecast. Like that's why yes. I'm uh, possible. That's why yes. musicians do it. Like we're yes, ear that's right, exactly. Stuff. So when we watched the Super Bowl, we watched Rihanna sing, and we're going, "Wait, that she's out of sync." But yes. no, she was actually singing yes. to the yeah. Yeah, it'll be track. interesting to see yeah. if that is the way that operates yeah. now. If there is a delay of some sort, but what we hear in the stadium and then what we see is two yes. different things. But I like someone to just break it down. I'd, I'm sure if you're watching the Fox Footy stuff tonight, they will freeze frame yes. it. It's officially a yeah, line yeah. ball decision. Don't you, just <laughs> feel, don't you yeah. feel for the umpire's well-being? Um, it should be. Yes. It should be. He. We all listen to the same siren. Because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. no, my siren's different. Like, well, it's because of a previous Dockers match, yeah. Nathan, down in Tasmania, mm. where the umpire didn't hear the siren. Oh, that's a problem. So the siren sounded, yeah. and the crowd knew it, but the noise was so loud that the umpire didn't hear it. And they went, and they kept on playing for five days. <laughs> yes. Oh, they did. I was like, like when does this game end? I was on the bench in that game. Yeah. I was sitting right. Next umpire Brett Rosebury, who's who's still umpiring as it is today. So he was the emergency umpire. He was the emergency umpire. We both stood up, yeah. we were chatting, and we walked to the to the boundary line, and then the game kept going. Now yes. he went to the tribe because there was a big investigation, and he was he said he didn't hear the um, siren. And you're, you were sitting next to him. I was sitting next to him. We got up. We got up. We got up and walked onto the field. Yeah. Mm, Brett. Oh. Oh. Can't trust these umpires. Oh. Oh, I do think it's an absolute line ball decision. Yeah. Well, and, literally. and you would not, you would not be blaming the umpires yes. either way. Either yeah. way. So Fremantle were just not good enough. The fact is, though, that you go back to the start of the game. They kicked two goals at the start of the game that were disallowed. Yeah. Because they went to the um, yeah. vision and yeah. they and they wanted to. Justin was really upset that they had a look at a mark that was taken earlier on. And Matthew Tabernay kicked the goal. That was disallowed. Then there was another one that was disallowed. Yeah. Then there was another free kick. Yep. So if they're going to video like on it, those decisions, it, yeah. why not on that? Yeah, I know. And I guess the other question is relating to the situation. So if the ball's not out of bounds when the game comes to conclusion, yeah. which is what they're saying, yes. they're still in play, then um, there can't be a free kick awarded because the siren's gone. So what's the difference between you kick the ball and... It's going towards goals. The siren bounce, siren sounds. The ball bounces, so it's still in play, yes. but then runs over the line. Yeah. 
that is and the umpires as a goal. call it yeah. a goal and or a point. Oh right, so if the ball is still in movement once the siren's gone, and it goes to what, goal, what it goes to the goal, and it goes it's to, if, if it's been kicked before. So why sorry, is it not sense. counted? A decision can be yeah. made because the, because there's no offence until the ball crosses the line. In in this case, yeah, but, yes. Yeah. So there's no score until this. Mm. Is it the same? I don't know. I don't That's know. It's confusing. It's confusing. Lastly, just to get rid of, uh, get rid of it. That's it. That's a poor choice of words. To, to get into it, the uh, Warriors won again the Sheffield Shield, and they deserve all the applaudance in the world. Appla- the Robert. Applaudance. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the right word. Applaudance. But, but the, the sentiment's nice. Um, <laughs> Give me a word that I'm nearly looking for. Applaudance. Now. Applaudance. You're Dance trying to say Dance. all the applause yeah. or all the applause? No, applaudance, applaudance. Is, applaudance. is is is, is um, a lot of people with dense applause. No, no, I was definitely going for applaudance. But not, I'm not, there's no end in it. Applaud it. Applaud it. Is that it? Mm. I didn't know that. As you can tell. <laughs> they have done Applauded. remarkably that's well. That's applaudance. Okay, that's applaudance. Is that what you're hearing there? Is that not a, word? a word? Is applaudance a word? No, no it's not no, a word. No, it's not, said everyone. Oh. The mighty West Coast Eagles back in form and Fremantle stinking it up. How are you, Pav? <laughs> well, summarised, Shawnee. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good summary of, of West Coast game yesterday. They, uh, they were very good against the Giants. Moved the ball quickly. Improved their um, contested ball stuff and, and their contest work, and that resulted in um, a really good a good result from them. Jermaine Jones off half back looks fast. Yeah, and he was good. They got he? the ball. They got, they got the ball moving into their forward line and allowed um, Jake Waterman to get on the end of it. So too Jamie Cripps. So they were very oh. impressive. And um, yeah, uh, Frio got some some major concerns. Hey Pav, when Frio has a loss, do you just go, oh God? Because you're going to get so much unsolicited advice and people <laughs> wanting you to, you know, like, do you know well, like that, give it that a used call. to be the case. Like, that used to be the case when I was captain, and that's why I started cutting my own hair. We, we've shared that story a few times. <laughs> yeah. um, 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 but my hair, but my hair now being so grey as it is, um, I don't get that much unsolicited advice. It's more. Um, it's more than people's every now and then coming up saying, what's going wrong? Can you get back out there? And I say, look at me. There's no chance I can. So, <laughs> See, Sean um, thinks he can still no, Yeah, yeah, of course he can. Of course he can. But, um, no, look, they've, they've, they've definitely got some issues. Um, last week it was really about how they used the ball inside forward fish, and we spoke about that last week, mm-hmm. didn't we? But yeah. on the weekend against North Melbourne, they just got smashed around the ball. Um, Luke Davies, Uniac, and also Cam Zerha and Ben Cunnington just taught the likes of Andy Brayshaw, Caleb Sarong, Will Brody, a lesson about winning the ball in a contested situation and then uh, getting it into their forward line. So there's yeah, some big concerns. Uh, and again, they, they they probably had enough opportunity. They, they they won the, in the end, they won the inside 50 count um, against North Melbourne. But that connection between, um, you know, that last kick inside 50 is just not working at the moment. No, it was really interesting watching that. It was There was passages of play where you thought, oh, they can get on roll here. There, there were some really good bits. And then it was just a complete meltdown going forward to centre. And guys who were free weren't getting seen. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was really, yeah, it was really strange. And, and I'm not I sure, think... Pav, if I throw this question at you, um, there's change in personnel in the team at the moment. Do you think that has changed the way things are operating? Look, a little bit. Uh, there's always um, the early part of the season to get your groove and, and get that chemistry. But realistically, they've had four months to, to train that up. So um, it shouldn't be yeah, too yeah. much of a concern. I think I think what happens is um, when you try to, you know, win a, they won a final last year. Let's not forget mm. they, um, you know, they, they do pretty well in the preseason, uh, particularly that last game against Port Adelaide. So when you start to tinker with the game plan a little bit, they're still a very young team and sometimes you can um, sort of try to force it too much or try too hard uh, and implement some of the tinkers to that game plan. So I think at the moment they, they almost need to you know, stop gripping the club so hard if you want to use a golf analogy and just actually play what's in front of you. Instead of trying to do exactly what the coach and the coaches are asking, just play footy. Just hit the easy kicks, take the simple options um, and try not to be so... Um, um, structured in the way you play, particularly when you're moving the ball inside forward 50, because it appears they're um, they're all just trying a bit too hard at the moment. Um, and I know that sounds um, when I say trying a bit too hard, it's not about their effort; it's about how they're executing and, and how they want to move the ball. Now, Pav, I mean, we do obviously want to see local success, and there's a bit of interest in the derby. But I tell you what, I hate to say it; this really hurts me and pains me to say this. Collingwood look like they're in a class of their own, don't they? 
Oh, very good work, mate, oh, on, uh, on the weekend. I hate it. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's I'm not so sure story. how good Port are going to be, although that said, they, they knocked off Brisbane on the weekend. Yeah. So I think we're just going to keep saying up until about uh, round seven or eight, the, you know, the sample size at the moment, like reacting yes. too too harshly on, on Freo is, is inappropriate, but also saying Collingwood are the world beaters is also probably inappropriate. Um, I think we're, just gonna, we're gonna need to, to get to sort of eight weeks of the year, get a bit of, a, a better and bigger sample size before we start writing teams off or, or saying that they're well baited. But I tell you, they were very impressive. <laughs> yes, um, I'll, I'll certainly right. say that against, uh, against Port on Saturday afternoon. Pav, now being a legitimate um, sports journalist, do you have to watch every single game? Do you watch all of them? Don't you use that word legitimate very loosely. Uh, oh, yeah, I've been really nice. <laughs> <laughs> we say it about Sean, it's, too, so yeah. that's your benchmark. It's because you know I'm going to come in there later, you know, know. maybe next week or whatever, yeah. so you have to yeah. look at me in the eye. And, uh, <laughs> no, sure look, no, look you in the thigh. What are you talking about? <laughs> look, yeah. um, just, just make sure it is the thigh. <laughs> I tell you what, it piqued his interest when you said yeah. when he gripped the club too tightly yeah, that's sometimes. Right. He was yeah. like, oh, hello, hello. we're on there. <laughs> yeah, we, we've all tried to do that a couple of times, Shelby. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I go when it hurts, they say. Um, so, so, Bev, do you watch all of them or are you just getting like the cheats notes? Um, I try to watch a bit of it, but I mean, we've got, so for example, yesterday we had uh, Harper playing basketball at Ben Dat Stadium and yeah. then we had. Uh, our two boys down, down playing, or you know, there was a Oz kick or, or Footy Club Gala day. So I missed, um, I openly missed some of the uh, the matches yesterday morning. Um, so and then you know, once winter sport comes around, we'll have, in terms of our kids, a mixture of uh, soccer, footy, basketball, and and minky and hockey. So. Oh, um, okay. I, you know, I'm, I'm putting it out there now. I might miss one or two matches. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I'm completely understandable. I'm just like because I, yes. I hear that when you're you're talking about games, Sean, yeah. and I'm just thinking like how you, like how many how games are not... there a week? Sorry, I don't know. I oh, know. Well, well nine. I mean, nine, 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 nine. That's like how long and how long is a game going for? Like <laughs> well, I, I tell you, one of the things when they're going through the highlight packages, <laughs> they're 100 minutes, but you go through yeah. the highlight packages. Yeah, go to the KO parts. minis, mate. Particularly <laughs> when you're doing it live, you got the whole thing. Yeah. And um, for our show, that we I generally, do, and then they, I generally they try to watch. I mean. I guess on, on the weekend with Fox, I, I watched um, yeah. and worked both West Coast and Creo game. Um, and then obviously with my the role with Nine uh, Perth, you do have to sort of keep abreast of everything that's happened. So yeah. I, I would oh. say I'd watch probably two games of, of full football yeah. and one, one of those obviously with Fox. And then you, know, you sort of catch. It's a bit like when the, the test match is on or the summer's on the, and the cricket or the tennis is always on in people's households. Well, yes. I guarantee you the footy's always on in our household once once winter comes around. It's just on Fox the whole time. You don't, you don't necessarily watch the whole game, but you're certainly getting a view of what yeah. may be happening for a quarter here or a quarter oh, there. Um, oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Surrounded mm, by footy. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I was, at, um, I was at some footy yesterday and there was a couple of mums there and they had... Uh, must have, was it the Swanee Tigers that had the gala day? Yeah. Yeah, so, so that was like Alex yeah. Pierce, Fremantle captain. Yes. Yes. He was there, and they could not believe how good looking he was. Oh yeah, no, they he's didn't a good know. Like, oh yeah, my yeah, god, yeah. Oh, he is he's a fine specimen. He is a fine. <laughs> he's got, a, he's got a terrific head of hair. <laughs> I know he's it's got amazing. A terrific head of hair, Alex. Yeah. And uh, he's got beautiful eyes. I'm with, I'm with those ladies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> you, you do subscribe to their opinions. Yeah, 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 totally, okay. I totally get it too. We love your work, Pat. Thank it's, you. Um, it's the same as all uh, former and current uh, Freo captain, Matt Reichel. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, oh, that's, how, that's how they judge that's it. How you two are, you two are hilarious. <laughs> Unbelievably yes. stunning. Take yeah. this down to the comedy lounge. <laughs> well done to Christine from Mundaring, who scored the Derby tickets. She'll be there. Fantastic. You can catch Pav on Nine News. You'll see him tonight doing the sport chatting to Tomo and uh, hopefully uh, a couple of big games this weekend we all can look forward to Pav thank you thanks guys yeah the Western Derby huge one thanks guys Sean Sport is a Nova podcast for more great comedy shows like this head to novapodcast.com.au